Look, there's one question for me straight off the bat, which is, why do you think annoying the general population is the best way to convert people to your cause? Yeah, well, I think the disruption coming down the line is unimaginable. Um, and, I mean, I, you know, I run a city recruitment business. I don't look like your usual uh, Boris Johnson uh, named Krusty. That's why they put you in front of the cameras. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, so, um, look, uh, I, I think it's necessary. And, I, you know, I, I think we need to do what we, what we can, you know. But but shouldn't you be, this is not how to win hearts and minds, is it, by disrupting uh, people's day-to-day -day routine and causing you know, millions of pounds of, of damage. I know that that's not what ha has happened so far, but that has been the case in the past. You need to win hearts and minds by convincing ordinary people uh, instead of disrupting them. Yeah, I mean, non-violent civil disobedience has worked in the past, and that's why we're you know, using that route. But um, look, come, come and join us. You know, we need action and we need, need it now. 2050, the government's t target date, it's, it's not good enough. We need emergency action, almost like we've needed with COVID. We need if, that type of action if now. If it's that much of an emergency, why does your founder drive a diesel car? <laughs> well, look, we're all hypocrites, right? We're all in the not, same... We're all in the not, same... Not to that extent, mate. No. I, didn't, I, didn't find, I didn't found Extinction Rebellion and then still drive a diesel car. <laughs> yeah, well, we're all, we're all in this system, right? I mean, I was born into this system. I, I, I mean, you know, I'm in a house, it's powered by gas and electricity. Can I afford to put a so some solar on it? No, but we're all hypocrites. Um, we, we need to all work together. We need to not personally blame. We need to work together, find a solution, and that is... It's, it's an emergency. So, it needs emergency funding now. So what is that solution? I, I mentioned uh, there about banning fossil fuels or not <laughs> investing in fossil fuels. Uh, what else do you want people to do or the government to force people to do before that 2050 net zero time? I'm glad you brought up fossil fuels because, I mean, it's 1%, I think, of, of emissions, the UK. But where's all the funding going from the city into fossil fuels? It's 50, 100 billion plus. Um, yeah, I'm not an economist, mm, but mm. Um, the Paris Agreement was in 2015. What's happened since then? More and more funding. I mean, it, it has to change. And this is why you see we've got kids on the street, grannies, city people like me now, <laughs> um, you know, all types of people. And we need, you know, we need change. Does that change involve the destruction of capitalism? Hmm. Very good question. I don't know the answer to that. I'm not an expert. Um, I'm just a volunteer. No, no, as in, is that, is, that, is that a message? Because I think, for someone like yourself, I've got to be honest, you know, you come, you state your case, you seem very high reasonable and there's no, there's no question oh, of you. that. That's all right. But, <laughs> but there are a lot of people who I have spoken to over the years involved with the Extinction Rebellion who don't just want climate, uh, the climate crisis to stop. They would also quite like something that looks a bit like communism. Mm. Is that where you're at? I mean, what happened with COVID? The economy almost completely stopped, mm. right? That's going to happen in the future. I don't know if capitalism will stay and will, will save us. I, I don't know. I hope so. Maybe some kind of creative capitalism. But um, what we need to do now is tell the truth. That's, I mean, I'm, I say I'm not from Extinction Rebellion. I'm a volunteer. But I like the idea of telling people the truth and like what is really happening. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have the Arctic's completely melted. I did geography at university. I thought, I thought, I thought, when, I, I thought when I studied that the Arctic would always be there, right? It's, it's going to possibly have completely melted but, by but 2050. Isn't, isn't, but when you say the Arctic's completely melted and then you go and... I mean, that's you can the tell kind, I haven't been on TV much, that, right? That, <laughs> but, 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 but there's a serious point because that's the kind of thing that, mm. you know, people who have a legitimate case to make about, uh, you know, climate change and, and you know, environmental damage, when they come out with some statements which sound like catastrophizing, that's where people yeah. switch off. Let me rephrase. So the sea ice will be, com will be completely melted by 2050, and that's what normally reflects heat, which means it's going to be absorbing heat by that time. We have no idea what that means. And so we're, we're taking all these risks, investing in fossil fuels and still doing what we're doing with all of these risks. It's irresponsible. It's got to stop. Hmm. Well, why don't you think more people care? Because I think a lot of people mm. do see it as, well, I can't afford an electric car, I don't necessarily want to re-insulate my house, I don't, you know, I do quite like flying to Spain every now and again. I mean, yeah. and, and also, actually, let me rephrase that. When the people right at the top of your movement, like uh, drive a diesel car or the Prince Harry's of this world of taking more private jets and I've had hot dinners, <laughs> does that not undermine the cause somewhat? You know, Sadiq Khan rolling around in a fleet of diesel cars? Yeah, I guess it does. I mean, I, I you know, we... None of us want a catastrophe. Mm. And, um, you know, as I say, we're all hypocrites. We're all in the system. We've got to work together. We can't personally shame people. It can't get personal. It's got to be as, uh, as a group. Just quickly, very quiet on China. Why? <laughs> well, I think we've got to get our own house in order. 
Um, I mean, I'm not going to go into something academic, but I think 95% of emissions that have ever been um, released into the atmosphere but from the US, um, and that's outsourced emissions and, and where they have companies all around the world. Um, so China, you know, they, they have their right to develop. Um, we need to make, you know, serious cuts now. So I think we need to get our own house in order first. So, we're, so basically we need to be the ones for a period of time cutting our cloth we should allow China to be. I think it's a difficult one. I mean, we for a long time have uh, polluted um, and China is only starting now to. So there's a fairness argument in here. What's fair? Um, but it, it is a difficult one. And I think China will have to fall in line eventually. Yes. Thank you very much. It's been great to have you on board. It's interesting, uh, interesting <laughs> stuff, I must say. And uh, yeah. Jonathan Tassel, thank you so much. And thank you so uh, much. Obviously, we might differ, but it's interesting to have the views. Will you be going back? Will you be going back out onto the streets now? What's the yeah, plan? we're presenting an award uh, oh. tomorrow to, to BlackRock, I think, for, oh, for the most uh, um, uh, destructive award for the Amazon. So right. Yeah, we've got that and uh, a few bits and pieces. But I've got a day job, so I need to go back to work <laughs> you now. Need to go back. <laughs> Good luck to you. All right. Well, Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.